we're going to talk about an environmental decision-making model. And I'll try to suggest to you the types of things that you should write in your notes. So stop the presentation as you need to to keep up with those things. Please write these steps down, the four things that you see in the greenish boxes. This is a model for decision making. If you're trying to make a decision about whether it's an environmental issue, where to go on vacation, or how to spend your money, you kind of go through these steps with each of these decisions. The first step in any decision making model is gathering information so that you know what you might be picking between. The second thing is you consider what you value and that would help guide you towards your decision. We'll list some values later so that this will be a little bit more clear. Then you explore the consequences. If I choose this, what are the things that happen? If I don't choose this, what are the things that happen? After reflecting on your values and the possible consequences of your decision, you evaluate them and make a choice. In terms of gathering information, just like any decision, you'd want to gather your information from a variety of sources. And that's true in an environmental decision as well. Then if you look at this picture, some of you would say, oh, that is awesome. It's quiet. It's beautiful. I'm out in nature. Others of you would look at this picture and say, that is the last place on earth I want to be. Away from my cell phone, away from my microwave, away from a bathroom. The way you look at this picture reflects the values that you hold as more important. Values are very personal decisions. It reflects what you think is important to you and it's sometimes not something you can explain. It's just a value that you hold. If we look at some examples, the things that people value in the environment, they would be things like how quiet it is, how it looks, how, how I can do recreational activities there. We're going to write these values down. So in terms of values, you want to know each one and what it means. The first thing is aesthetics. Aesthetics is looking at a problem or a situation based on what is beautiful or pleasing. So in terms of the environment, that might be what something sounds like, what something looks like, or even what something smells like. The next value you could look at is economic. Does the decision that we would make about the environment cause jobs or money to be gained or lost? So if we allow certain recreation, recreational activities in a certain park, will that bring more people to the park? Will that provide jobs for the people in the community who sell things to people who come to use the park? Environmental just means that you value protecting the natural resources at any cost. So you may not have a specific reason except for the fact that you feel that it's the right thing to do, protecting the environment. You might also look at an environmental decision based on what we would learn by making that decision. So we can, can we gain knowledge by preserving and studying a certain area? Some people look at environmental issues as an ethical choice. For instance, the wolf hunt. Is it the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do? Some people are simply morally opposed to the hunting of wolves and that would be the value that they're focusing on. The next value is health. And this would be looking at a problem and reflecting on how it affects people or animals health. Does it help keep them healthy or prevent illness? Another angle is looking at the recreational value. This simply means providing leisure activities for human people to pursue. Things like skiing or swimming or boating or fishing or hunting. And the last one is a social or cultural value. Basically maintaining some group of people's value or tradition. For instance, Native American groups in Minnesota have the right to net fish out of 
Lake Mille Lacs. That has an effect on the population of fish in Lake Mille Lacs. But this is a, a, a um, right that they negotiated through treaty and has been part of their tradition for many, many years. So allowing them to continue netting the fish is a respect for their cultural norm. Continuing then, now that we've recorded the values and what they mean, we would move on to the next part of our decision-making model, which is looking at consequences to decide what we might choose to do. So please stop the presentation at this point and copy this chart into your notes. Now that you've finished with the chart, let's explain what it means. Basically, consequences happen after or as a result of a decision you've made. Short-term consequences happen sort of immediately, so within the time frame of days or months. Long-term consequences have to do with things that take many, many months or even years to happen. So for instance, I'm going to make a decision whether I should buy a Hummer or I should buy a Volt battery operated car. The short term consequences may be positive or negative. So on the positive, people might say, hey, like the Hummer, that's kind of a positive outcome. Um, I in the negative, would have to spend a lot of money on gasoline. If I look at the long term of this decision to buy the Hummer, um, I have had to spend a lot of money to buy the Hummer, and therefore I can't spend that money on something else. That might be a no long term negative. I'm not sure if there is a long term positive for buying a Hummer, but it would be something that would continue uh, on for a long time. If I changed my mind and I bought the Volt instead, the battery operated car, a long term positive effect would be the, um, the less damage that car would do to the environment. Maybe the negative, those batteries could wear out and they have to be replaced. Ultimately, you make a decision based on which values you think are more important and what consequences uh, seem better to you. So trying to make up an example of a, an issue, we might have boats being allowed into the boundary waters. And by boats, I mean motorized boats. At this point, most of the boundary waters is limited to uh, boats, kayaks that are people powered and therefore wouldn't have any motors. So if I were to now allow motorized boats into the boundary waters, the short-term negative for the environment is there might be oil, s oops, that's the negative one. There might be uh, oil spilled into the lake. There'd be noise pollution and some air pollution. There probably is nothing positive for the environment about adding boats with motors to the boundary waters. If there's no short-term effect, often there's no long-term effect. The negative long-term effect would be that the pollution the motors make may impair some of the animals, causing their populations to drop. On the economic side, the positive short-term would be that people in those towns who sell gasoline, motorboats, parts for motors, they would have more business. The negative short-term is that people who rent canoes and outfitters may have less business. So for them, that's a negative outcome. The long-term positive outcome, if there's more money in the town, the tax base may go up. The negative long-term, maybe some of the outfitters uh, go out of business because they, they don't have enough customers anymore. From a recreational point of view, the short-term positive would be that people who like motorboats to cover more distance would now come and be able to have recreational opportunities. The short-term negative effect is that people who canoe and want quiet might want to go somewhere else. Positive long-term for recreation, uh, maybe they would have now some kind of fishing contests that involve boats moving large distances that they never had before. 
And they're probably, in terms of recreation, I'm not sure if there is a long-term negative. It would probably be the same as the short-term negative. Aesthetics means how something looks or smells. Uh, the short-term positive, if we add motorboats, probably does not add anything. So that one would be blank. Negative short-term, uh, again, if we have noise and air pollution, they would not be pleasing to people. And then again, I don't think there is a long-term positive effect for the uh, environment um, from an aesthetic, an aesthetic point of view. The negative long-term, if that pollution builds up um, to affect maybe people's health. Finally, based on your value, the consequences of your, of your uh, choices, you reach a decision. What we're going to do over the course of the next few days is you and a partner and then another pair of people are going to get an environmental issue. You're either going to say we're either in favor of this or against it. So back to our example, motorboats in the boundary waters, we are for having boats or we are against having boats. Then between your group, you're going to add up the, or, uh, divide up the values. So you may get aesthetic and economic. Your job is then, using your view, we will let motorboats in the Boundary Waters canoe area. Uh, what are the positive and short-term negative uh, effects based on the values you get? And then we're going to present to these to each other, trying to learn about some Minnesota issues. So the next time in class, we'll divide up the issues and we'll divide up the values. Allow some time for research and putting your presentations together. And then we'll present to each other. So what you should have out of today's present, what you should have recorded out of today's presentation is the steps in a decision-making model, the eight values that you might look at an environmental problem uh, from, and then what are the difference between long and short-term consequences, and I think you know what positive and negative consequences would be. That is the end.